Canada's indigenous to meet Pope Francis and amid demand for apology in Canada, amidst escalating calls for the Roman Catholic Church to apologize for their role in the cultural genocide of Canada's native peoples, the current pontiff has agreed to meet with representatives from the affected communities. The Pope is expected to convene a meeting with representatives of the First Nations, Matisse, an Inuit people by December 20th, 2021. So it's set to occur by the end of this year. The delegates will also include survivors of the notorious residential schools, elders and knowledge keepers, indigenous leaders, youth and bishops. In an Angelus message made on June 6th, 2021, Pope Francis claimed that he is close with the Canadian people and that he is sorrowful upon hearing of the discovery of the remains of 215 children in British Columbia. Why? I don't get it. Why? Why does? Why don't they just apologize? Like, what's the holdup? Like, why do you have some? Like, okay, fine, meet with them. That's all that. But why do you have to like wait for the meeting? Like, I, can somebody explain to me the holdup when it comes to the apology? Like, even if you're like a leader of a desperate irrelevant morally bankrupt or you know institution um and you're only thinking about strategically staying in power and all like this doesn't make moral sense but it also doesn't make strategic sense like why what's the what's the logic behind not apologizing from their perspective yeah go to this is something that i don't fully understand yet and i'm gonna have to look into because this may be kind of um a technicality situation. I, I, this is something I need to research. But there That's were some. I was thinking, there were some like bishops protocol. who were. Yeah, there were some bishops who were saying that technically he cannot personally apologize for this. But I need to look at. I need to fully understand exactly what that hang up is. I don't understand if this is protocol. If this is more from the doctrine. If this is. I, I'm. I'm not sure what that sticking point is. Or yeah. If, where it's coming from and Rivka that's exactly what I was thinking when and Armin was asking that question like it may just be some institutional um uh ladders you have to climb through and hoops you have to jump through because it's more than even though it it, may, it seems odd because the Pope's supposed to be God's representation on earth and he's infallible so shouldn't he be able to just say yeah we're sorry but I got the impression that that's what it's about. It's some kind of institutional um, way that this works, and you have they have to follow all the steps, some kind of protocol or what Suze was saying. Well, let those protocols uh, continue making more people hate you. This is great for us. Like, just don't apologize. And this will be really bad PR for you guys, which works in our favor. So continue to con proceed to become less and less relevant to the Catholic Church. We love it. Um, however, I also do want to uh, make sure that people understand with the meeting, with the apology, um, they, they need to pay. Like, like it's amazing that we're the holdup is an apology because if they were apologizing and they were not like you know paying any reparations like there needs to be a lot of reparations like they need to they were responsible for this and they need to compensate all these people for it so like apology would not even be starting to be close to enough and they can't even do that anyway so it's, it's very weird it okay well first of all like i all the stakeholders involved with this acknowledge that an apology is just the first step towards healing, right? Like, like Armin said, obviously it's not enough. It's not going to be the end of the conversation, but I think for the, the, I think the nation of Canada itself, as well as the specific communities that were affected, like it's just a starting place. Um, I think, I think Trudeau called for the Catholic Church to give an official apology. There's been calls for them to give an official apology for a long time after 
the Truth and Reconciliation Commission um, on the part of the Canadian government, you know, had this investigation that said, like, yeah, we basically did cultural genocide and gave an official apology, like, to these communities. And at the point that the government of Canada, the state, is issuing these statements and making these commissions to change, um, to raise awareness about the situation that will hold people accountable, like, there has been this calls from the state of Canada itself upon the Catholic church to make these apologies. And it still hasn't, that was years ago when the truth and reconciliation commission first made these statements. So this is a long time coming. It's a really long time coming. I was also thinking that some of the hold up with the apology in regards to what you were saying. And then Armin is that that's part of maybe the hold up is that once you acknowledge that you did something wrong, then you are, you know, then people are going to expect reparations. It's somehow, you know, I, I think that that's somehow part of the holdup maybe too, is because they don't want to have to go through the next step then, you know, if they get sued or if they are supposed to, you know, do something else. I think that that's often why people stall on these things. Because once you admit that you're sorry, then you've admitted you're wrong. And then that makes people feel entitled to recompense. That's a very good point, especially considering that um, one of the last times we talked about the story of the dis the discovery of hundreds of bodies at these residential schools, um, I believe we showed a video of the Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau, um, demanding an apology from the Vatican before they begin criminal proceedings or something along those lines. Do you remember that video we watched, Armin? Like, Trudeau used language talking about criminal prosecution in some kind and i was like these are huge words from the prime minister like i can't believe that that those statements weren't weren't highlighted in the news as much um but this is i think possibly one of the biggest stories coming out of canada right now especially religiously related stories and so this is going to be a long process and we're going to continue to cover this in great depth um including our next news, which goes into some other events that are associated with this. But this isn't going away anytime soon. Armin? I just want to remind people about the, you know how a lot of people in Europe and North America have a concern about creeping Sharia, foreign investment in mosques, spreading dangerous ideologies, and governments needing to step up and take an action against it, right? Well, when it comes to the level of harm, creeping Vatican seems to have done a lot more harm to a country like Canada than creeping Sharia ever has done. Creeping over... Catholicism? Yeah. Cre yeah. So I wonder, like, where are those people who are like, government needs to investigate mosque fundings and shut them down? How many people have died, like in Canada, over spreading of sharia compared to the canadian children more right? people have died from anti-muslims attacks in canada than people who have died from islamist attacks in canada yeah, true but let's compare these these two things right mm -hmm. no, victims from number of victims from sharia in 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 canada number of victims from catholic doctrine in canada a lot more from the Catholic doctrine. So shouldn't the people who are saying like close down these mosques and stop the foreign funding, they should close down the Catholic church. If you're worried about that, if, if you are being consistent, I mean, I'm not advocating for the government to shut down Catholic church and all that because I'm a free speech and all, and all right? But if you are being consistent, you would be like, this is a foreign sourcing that is coming from outside of Canada to Canada, and we have had already enough victims for it to justify shutting down all the churches, right? If you were being consistent, right? This would be much higher in your priority in shutting down than mosques, right? Again, I'm not in favor of supporting mosques. I, I would, I would, my ideology would be the government should stay away from meddling in people's ideologies and all that. You can sue them though for damages and stuff, but you shouldn't be able to like decide who gets to say what. However, the people who do advocate such things, they're not very consistent with it. But anyway. 
Or anyone who wants to add to this or anything in the live chat you want to highlight? For, while I... um, I'll look in the live chat. Oh, yes. Yeah, Secular Rarity had an interesting question, uh, comment saying the Vatican is legally considered a country and should be tried in the International Criminal Court for various crimes against humanity throughout the world and throughout history. That's a very good point. I wonder. Hmm. Good luck with that. I know. I wonder what would happen. Like, how would that even go down? Oh, my God. Um, I think they will be able to say they, no, it would be legally almost impossible to hold them accountable. Like, for example, let you know, let's say Islam is responsible for a certain crime in Germany, right? You're not going to be able to criminally or charge the mosque that this person prayed in or get the, got their ideology from. You wouldn't even be able to sue them civilly as well, right? There could be like, good luck proving a direct, you know, e even if you could prove a direct correlation, a causation between these the teaching and the person, you can't prove intention um, by the mosque, right? So, like, the standards of what is accepted in a court of law for, like, even in a civil court, you're not going to be able to get anywhere because you, there's no causation. And if there was causation, you, it, it's just so loose. The, you know, the causation is so many degrees of separation that it's not going to stand in court. But then in criminal court, that the standards are even higher than in a civil court. Yeah, I mean... Really good luck with that. It's not going to happen. This is not going to happen, right? Um, yeah. It's also interesting on that very point because some of one of the um, residential schools where hundreds of these unmarked graves were found was operating um, as late as the 1970s, right? So, and then there were other residential schools, um, whether operated by governments or operated by religious entities that were running as late as 1996 or 97. So that's what's interesting is that I'm there's got to be people who are involved in the things that happened there that are still alive. So maybe they could be held responsible. Um, Rivka? So in, in 2011, there was a suit brought by a um, network of those abused by priests, they filed a complaint in the International Criminal Court uh, allegation against the top Vatican officials for crimes against humanity, covering up our and other uh, assaults uh, committed by priests around the world. But what I was going to say is, so it, it actually, you know, somebody did that. You know, this article is in the uh, Denver Journal of International Law, and it's from 2011, because I knew that there had been something like that. The other thing to know about International Criminal Court is you have to be a signatory to these treaties and say that you will, you're, it only, uh, you know, that uh, jurisdiction for crimes committed in the territories of signatory countries is what I'm trying to say. And if you're not, then they don't have your jurisdiction, jurisdiction to bring you to trial. And the United States and the Vatican are both um, non-signatories. Yeah, but even if you were a signatory, like you wouldn't, like for example, International Criminal Court will not be able to. Let's look at two same actions from right. Saudi I understand Arabia. the burden let, of proof I, is too high. No, can I? Let me let me finish. Um, even if even if you had proof, right? You can't, for example, charge Saudi's government like for like for, let's look at 9/11, okay? If your claim is that the ideology that Saudi Arabia funded, that ideology led to 9/11, that's not going to hold up in court, right? If you can show that the government was actively involved with funding the people who took down the action, then they're like, okay, we have a case. But if you say like there was a certain ideology that was promoted, certain people who were following that ideology took that ideology to come up with conclusions that led to this action, 
that's not gonna yeah like the judge is like what is this like i don't <laughs> right that's not gonna work right um or if you say like what could work is like you could like oh like Mohammed bin Salman was actively involved in funding the people who killed Khashoggi that could hold up in court right some sub court I don't know um oh by the way um Rivko there are, the ICC still can't take countries to uh, charge countries that are not signatory they just don't have power to you know execute much like I know, like I know some. I think some Iranian Iran's is not Iran's government is not a signatory. Mm. Their cases are still being heard in the International Criminal Court. I don't know the details, but they I, don't I, have any real jurisdiction to actually do anything. Mm. They're kind of been made impotent in in right the extent of if you're not participating in the system, the system right. can't punish you. Right within the just, system, they can they still could, say, "Yeah, we don't like this behavior, and this is wrong." Mm -hmm. or so because something because a lot of like government officials say like why are you passing judgment we are not a signatory but the thing is that the international criminal court i think they could still pass a judgment but without actually any consequences the only consequences that might be helpful is the world now knows that according to international criminal court these people have committed a crime they looked at the they looked at the evidence and they have officially announced that yes this was a crime so your international reputation and uh, human rights activists and if if a country wants to sanction you now they have something solid to base it upon but yeah there there's no i i think that's how it works don't quote me on this i mean anyway. yeah it's like just because you're not beholden to us doesn't mean we can't talk about you <laughs> exactly a great summary i think hey guys if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy cali you know like me then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter link in the description below because if you subscribe we will send you a free copy of our blasphemous art ebook and let me tell you it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today and we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week so make sure to subscribe link in the description below